Hello, welcome. Welcome. It's, it's a long overdue Tiger Wolf podcast. We're recording audio again, this time while periscoping. Uh, but today we're going to talk about board games and video games, and which has their place and stuff. Oftentimes when we uh, have recorded podcasts <laughs> in the past, we've been playing video games. Today we're going to be playing a board game, which is why you're going to hear so much meeples dancing on the, on the table. So hopefully it's not overwhelming. Did you say meeples or meatballs? Yeah, meeples are the little characters. Actually, this the game playing today is called Carcassonne. <laughs> <laughs> the little uh, figures using it are called meeples, and they... Why are they have, called meeples? I'm not sure where it came from exactly, but this is the game that popularized them. And now you'll find in many, many, many games have exactly these figures. And they're just, uh, they're known as meeples everywhere and you go in the industry. They're wood and fake people. Yeah. They're good. Like, there's, there's so many games that came out, uh, I don't know, 90s, early 2000s, that were about, like, farming and selling in the Mediterranean and... These were all kind of part of the Euro game boom. And for and these little meeples were universally sailors or farmers or meeples. whatever you needed them to be. So in this game alone, they are knights, farmers, th- and thieves. And uh, All right. Yeah. Let's do it. So um, because it had been a while since we've, we've talked, I think since the last time we actually, um, we just revamped our Twitter page. So we're more talking about games um so we changed our name from tiger wolf cast to tiger wolf games um and i think that's just because it just made it a little bit clearer what we were doing uh it wasn't that we were doing podcasts it was more that we're doing podcasts and Ooh. <laughs> oh no they found me oh no we're gonna oh. take our pod- podcast offline now yeah okay well that was an ambulance um so what kind of games do what kind of what kind of games are inbound? Any kind of games or only apps from Everything. five years ago? No, we can talk about 2014 and 15 and 16, all the way back to 1991 if we want, and board games included. What about ET, the video game? Can we go further back than 1991? Yeah, if you want, you want to talk about ET, the extraterrestrial, the greatest video game disaster of all time, the greatest video game ever to be buried in the desert. And then they proved. Um, did you see that they proved that that was true? Yes. Yeah. They yeah covered them fantastic. Not that long um, okay. What do I do? Do I go there? You, no. This is the starter tile. Oh. Okay. So the first thing you do is just grab a tile. There's two okay. things you do every turn. You grab a tile, and then you decide if you want to. Um, <laughs> you decide. You decide if you want to place a guy. Now, the tile you happen to pick is a really awkward one because as soon oh. as you attach it to that castle there, which is really the only place you can put it, you can't go in the castle because I'm already oh. in there. Oh. So you, that's as much as you can do this turn. Oh. Well, that was a boring turn. Yeah. Thus, video games win. <laughs> um, okay, so, so board games just, um, they kind of recently had a renaissance. So do you know kind of when, when board games hit that renaissance period where suddenly they were cool again? Well, it feels like it's still happening. So it's always a little bit hard to gauge when, you, when you're in the middle of it. But This is a squeaky chair. Yeah. Um, it's, it definitely was a gradual thing and I don't know when kind of that, uh, that moment when the, uh, maybe we're not even there yet where it's sort of really taking over pop culture, but without question, um, people are way more familiar with a game like Settlers of Catan, which is definitely a hobby, hobby game, whereas 10 years ago that definitely wasn't the case and that's. You know, I think 1995 is when Settlers of Catan came out. So you can kind of chart the popularity of that game, and it mirrors the the impact of the cult, the hobby within the culture. Right. Um, so I'm not sure. I, it's, it's it's still kind of a growing thing. Like every once in a while, during the Super Bowl, for example, last year, um, or leading up to the Super Bowl, rather, uh, in the conference finals, semifinals, there was a big story about how the Green Bay Packers were big into Settlers of Catan, and so people, <laughs> people in the stands were like holding up uh, signs that said like I have three sheep to sell you that kind of like like all like in joke stuff, crossing over with a major sporting event. So there's stuff like that that's happening that you kind of see that's like you know you'll see it mentioned in sitcoms or magazines or whatever. Like it's it's just slowly kind of permeating pop culture. So it's hard to know how big it's going to get. Um, you know, do we have more 
board game can. cafes than we do uh, video game. I don't know if you call them cafes. Video game cafes? Yeah. Like, or arcades? Like, I know, like... Or, like, computer kind of internet cafes. Yeah. I, I, we probably don't, but, but they're definitely growing. And you would say, like, internet cafes and such are probably decreasing. Mm-hmm. But it's also partly just because the home experience is getting better and better and better all the time. I guess it depends on where you go, right? Like, in places like, um, like in China, internet cafes are quite, quite big. Like, they're still... A force to be reckoned with, um, filled with you know kids playing video games, uh, especially like massively multiplayer online games, right? Mm-hmm. But yeah, you're right. Like the the rise of of the board game kind of cafe restaurant bar thing has been quite huge. Actually, there was one thing that I heard about um, about like the video game or video games in like bars is that they consider it gambling. Oh. So you have to have some sort of like casino or gambling license in order to have video games in a bar. Interesting. But you can have board games in a bar, and that's not gambling. I wonder what if, if that's why you see so many... So often when you go to a, a bar, the games they have are like poker or yeah. blackjack, whatever it is. Maybe they have a gambling license or something. Yeah, like. and so you you know they are like kind of like slot machines in a way. You keep plugging your... Quarters, or I have no idea. Yeah. Dollar coins, whatever it is. Pull tab. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> pull tab. Pull tab's funny. They, there, <laughs> there was a, a while turn. there where they had um, they had like a cycle for the pull tabs that they would pull out. Okay. Um. So that's when you could theoretically put like over or here this, this or over tile. here. I could put this here, but it doesn't line up nicely. Well, if you put it here, like it lines up with the road, right? Yeah, and road. Then, that okay. means that you now can claim this castle because it's not touching my castle. My castle. There you go. Oh, that's your castle? This is all, yeah, everything is connected oh, to Oh, man, that's Marcus. all your castle? But what you could theoretically do is if you combine this castle to mine, then all of a sudden we're sharing the castle. So you oh. get half the points. All oh, right. Yeah. Uh, pull, pull tabs for a while <laughs> had like a cycle to them. So I knew, <laughs> I knew a guy who... For like a year, made his living off of pull tabs because he would pop in any bar he was driving by, pump like five bucks in, and if he if he found he was in the right part of the cycle, he would just keep putting money in until he get the the big win, because he knew <laughs> he knew the the, the knew pattern, yeah, and so that worked for about a year before they finally started making it random. But what he said is he made like six figures <laughs> that particular year, just living off of pull tabs, so you know, make lucky. It yeah, I don't know it's if incredibly I. Incredibly lucky. I don't know what kind of gaming uh, we would consider that exactly, but mm. um, I believe that's one of the the, the uh, gaming variables: uh, luck or <laughs> randomness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I think it's just interesting. Like video games, video games are obviously awesome. I think. Um, but, oh, where should I go there? I'm going to go here. Um, video games are obviously awesome. I love video games. Um, but in particular, I love strategy games. So that's where I think there's a, there's a crossover between certain, it seems to me like maybe you, cause you know more about board games than I do. Sure. Or card games or just pen and paper or et cetera. But it seems like there's more of a crossover with strategy games and like in video games to board games then there is like you know first person shooter video games to first person shooter board games well the games that we played when we were younger like um we talked about the the three kingdoms that is essentially a board game right like there's certain options you can do but you're playing on a big map of china and you collect cool character cards yeah exactly and i mean the great thing about video games is that it's way faster like if I think about that time when we started playing that, and around the same time I played a lot of like Access and Allies and Risk, Access and Allies, like the setup time would be like an hour. It's agonizing. And is it my turn? Yeah. And it reminds me of the Three Kingdoms we would turn on and playing immediately. Yeah. So and there's good. just there's obviously just way more depth to what you can do in the game than than what you can do in a board game. Um, so there is, I think there is crossover as far as see, so yeah, I've already got this farmland here. So you can't claim the farmland there. What? You've got what? Oh, what? My, yeah, basically any, any green that is touching here. Oh, no, so I put down farmland for you? Yeah, but farmland 
<laughs> we're going to keep having breaks where we talk about this carcass home. <laughs> um, farms only count when you have a complete castle. So right now, maybe I don't have any points. But as soon as this castle closes up, there'll be points for him. It'll also be points for your farmer here, too, because his farm yeah, land farmer. over here touches that castle. So. so can I just do that, then? Absolutely. So you basically are kind of closing up that little area there, which is good. So you don't really need to put a farmer here, because you already have this land claimed by, trying to keep by my both guys? these guys. Yeah, you, okay. you don't want to lose them too quickly. Okay. Um, what was I saying? Strategy games. There yeah, is romance. Something about romance. Fast. Yeah. yeah, it is just playing the video game is way faster, mm-hmm. and but yet it's still more involved. So board games like way more labor to actually get into to get it. get it set up. But I think there is more a more like for like experience. Part of the appeal for those Koei games you played like Romance, No Bunkers Ambition, stuff like that was always this idea like, oh, we can play like eight people at a time. This is amazing. Literally, I don't think it ever happened where we played more than like four maybe. Yeah. Um, I think max it was like two, three people we'd play with. Right. And I think nowadays gamers would say like that's not an issue with being able to play online. But I think what appealed to me with the idea was the idea of playing with, like, friends, right? Yeah. And hanging out together and that kind of a thing. So yeah. board games definitely scratch that itch. Right? We, get, like, we get, like, a five-player game of Access and Allies, and, like, we would just be so into everybody's move. Like, even though there's huge gaps between everybody's turn, um, if I'm, like, playing the UK, I'm, like, desperately hoping my friend buddy who's playing with the United States is, like, doing everything he can to keep Germany off my back kind yeah. of thing. Like, I'm just yep. so invested in it. Um, and part of that's just because we're there and we're like, you know, fooling around and bantering and, and that kind of stuff. So, um, so those are like significant differences, even though there's more similarities. And I think the way it's evolved is that obviously games themselves have changed a lot. Like, I don't know if those strategy games we were into are as prevalent today in video games. No, because they, they don't sell. They're not very popular. Yeah, exactly. I think the ones, the ones that do sell are your games like, um... Like, all the, the kind of big PC war games. Yeah. You know, that war simulation strategy type genre. Right. Those yeah, are like, those are those have a quite a big following. Like, real-time strategy stuff? Yeah, like some of the stuff that Sega's done, right? Like, mm-hmm. on PC that they've released on Steam. I think Steam is your, is your platform for that type of game. But you don't see them on console quite as much. Like, mm-hmm. even... I don't think the latest Romance of the Three Kingdoms video game came out here in North all. America. They never even yeah. bothered localizing it. Mm-hmm. So my turn? Which is a shame it is. Um, there's something nice about the the how tactile a board game is. I mean yeah. I think that's a huge win. Is like oh, for sure. no screens, like we can sit here, yeah there's screens on because we've got high high periscope and high camera Oops. and you keep a little off. thingy. What's that? I keep drifting off of periscope. Yeah you do. Um, <laughs> but you know there's something nice about like physical things that you can make sound with Mm -hmm. you know i can rub it in front of the microphone and you just can't do that with a controller Mm -hmm. i know that's a really lame reason to like board games but i don't think it is at all because there's something nice about feeling handheld i think that culturally we see this thing where uh, as we get more and more digital um there's Mm -hmm. a reaction that's happening where people are way more into like going outdoors and way more into doing things that are tactile because uh, you have to kind of more actively seek it out. Mm-hmm. Um, otherwise, you'll lose it because there's just so there's so much time spent, you know, on your phone or on the computer or whatever it is. So this also, I think, is this boom probably can be tied to a reaction to that. Um, yeah, it's like a countercultural thing, right? The cultural movement is moving towards more and more video games that require less setup and they're easier to to play with. And if it's just you by yourself, you can play with anybody online, which mm-hmm. is awesome. Yeah. There's, um, there's a, at the same time, sort of an interesting movement where uh, video games, or sorry, board games are starting to take advantage of technology a little bit as well, where they'll release apps uh, in... Does uh, work? No, because the road goes into the farm there. Oh, okay. Um, but that could work? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, Do I have to put a guy in there? If you want to claim it. Yes, I call it a claim it. Um, so they'll release apps in the same time the go of the game. So uh, I think the game that, they, that just came out with like that is Spectre Ops. And it's sort of an interesting comparison to video games because a lot of people compare it to, I think, to XCOM, I think, was the game. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it's like you have your... Which is still around. Yeah. So you're, Which I think is like kind of set up on a space station kind of a thing. Yeah. And you're fighting off aliens, I believe. And, yeah. and it's very, like, intense. And they've created sort of the intensity in this game by the fact that the app will have a timer. So um, you can't... 
there's a couple of things. You, you can't see what your opponent is doing, so there's like a hidden movement mechanic. So, right, right. So there's tension that comes from that, but there's also a timer that's, that comes on the app, and the app is like, once you start the app up, it's telling you, you know, you have 10 minutes, 9 minutes, 8 minutes, that kind of thing. So it's like a, a timed experience. So they're finding these other ways to kind of create sort of adrenaline, which you don't normally mm. associate with a, with a game. With a board game? Yeah, not in that way. Actually, you know what that reminds me of is, um, have you played, what's it called? There's an app that Josh introduced me to that's uh, Space, is it Space Team? Oh, I think you showed me this too. Or... Space Team, it's like, it's basically like, it's it's an app, but you all have the app and then it's connected via Bluetooth, so you don't have to be online. And then each of you has your iPhone or your iPod or your iPad, mm-hmm. I guess. Um, and then it shouts out commands and you have to go, like you have partners, is like whoever has the, the mass, you have to kind of shout out commands and then the other person has to take the action but shout out a command to the other people that are in there. So if you have like four people around this table, then you have like, turn the starboard knob. And then whoever's got the starboard knob has to turn it. And then he's, and you're like, flick the switch. And the other person who has the switch has to flick it. And you're trying to keep the, the ship afloat. But it's like kind of trying to make apps yeah. more tactile, yeah. like, like a board game. Yeah. It's, it's pretty rad. It's coming back towards that common ground. And the fun thing with that too is it's so dependent on communication um it's just it's just mm-hmm. really clever i do not remember the name of the game i played uh yeah, yeah quite recently but it's a trivia game and you buy like a pack of like these sort of you don't know jack well it's just like that it's like <laughs> you don't know jack but you're uh we we're playing on somebody's xbox and you interface with yeah. your phone um so like you're just using your phone to give answers or type in suggestions or you're basically every time they'll Is that trivia crack no, it is a trivia game, and basically you're trying to... You're putting mm-hmm. in lies, and people vote for your lies, you get points. And, of course, if you vote for the correct answer, you get points. Um, but it's a fun little game, and it's and it's made that much more effective by the fact you could just you're stay on your phone, and uh, there's no danger of, like, giving away answers or that kind of a thing. So, yeah, no, it's, it's interesting, because I think that they probably will continue to melt technology in the, the tactile word, world of cardboard at the same time I think the the yeah so uh, Carcassonne break here uh, Carcassonne Chris, Chris has completed a castle <laughs> each each tile of the castle is worth uh, two points so Chris gets six points and you get your man back woohoo yeah I think that's good although oh. it doesn't seem like a lot of points no, but it's, it's... But you completed something, It's not insignificant. Yeah, so the road here, I, I didn't... I forgot I completed is worth four, because like, each road piece is worth one. So I get my guy back and get four points for the road that I had completed. How did you complete it? Oh, because you went from the farm to this house? Yeah, this is like a, it's like a church. Um, oh, sorry, church? And if the church gets... There's no cross. That's why I was confused. That's right. See. Well, it's like a monastery or... I don't know. <laughs> but if the church it's is... It's a non-denominational, like, that's right. could be Buddhist monk or Buddhist Buddhist temple. That's true. Yeah. When I was a kid, we used to call those onion castles, and probably that was completely inappropriate. But yeah, probably. Sikh, the Sikh temples. I apologize to uh, our Sikh followers, our Buddhist followers, or whatever. So, those what are your favorite board games right now? Totally different tangent. Um, been well, I've got a longer list than I do current video games because I just don't have time for video games really. And like, so how do you have time for board games and not video games then? Well, I intentionally make time for board games. <laughs> um, I have to. Um, so I have a couple of different groups that I get together with, uh, mm-hmm. usually once every couple of weeks, and uh, and Thanks. so we'll play a variety of games. And one of the groups that I play with, they're if really I do getting this, into. Do I get it? What's that? Do I get this line now? Uh, no, because I am I have the thief on the road, oh. so if you close that off, then I'll get all those points. Oh, I don't want to do that. But the longer that road goes, too, the more points I'll get, so... Oh, dear. What do I be... do with this thing? Can I put it somewhere random? Yeah. That like, there's connect? one side that has... Is there anywhere that doesn't connect and give you points? Sorry, we're playing the board game again. <laughs> well, there's nothing on this side, right? So you can go that up against grass, or against grass over here. So that's kind of a safe oh, yeah. way to play it. Safe. Or you could, if you connect it here, well, that does no. give me like one point. But. Forget that. <laughs> but I get some points because I close this other one. But you don't have a thief? Yeah, if you put a thief on there, if you do that and put a thief on here, that's an easy three points. And you got three right points. Right. Yeah, three points. I'll take three points. 
Okay, sorry, Focus I just had to break. score some points. Um, yeah, so, sorry, you, you, you intentionally make time. I intentionally make time. Uh, one of the groups I'm playing with that you came up with recently, they're really into card games right now, so we've been playing Dominion, which I'm always in favor of because I love Dominion. It is um, a great game. Dominion is fantastic. It's a great game. The, <laughs> the game that we played together was quite slow. Um, really? It's not usually that slow. Oh. Um, partly because we, like, we slowed down it? Like, the noobs slowed it down? Well, new people do slow it down, but... Ha ha ha! Having five, it's actually a four-player game. We're playing five players. Right. So that slows it down, too. But um, my favorite part of the game is when people are comfortable with it, and you just, like, every turn just going... Fly through. Sh- 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 yeah. Right. Because um, it just has fantastic flow, so... But it also has, like, I have... A base game and two expansions, so I've got like 60 different cards I could potentially use, and every game is 10 different cards. Right. So there's a massive amount of combinations I could get <laughs> out of those games, and there are a number of other expansions I could grab, um, but um, I haven't I haven't near gotten everything out of the there, ones yeah. I've gotten, uh, the ones I have right now, so um, yeah, I know it's a great game, so I've been playing that. Um, there's a game, uh, another card game I've been playing with my other group called Epic Spell Wars, uh, which is um, wildly inappropriate in some ways. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's a very, I'll call it say, blue sense of humor to it, but right. the thing that I enjoy about it, again, is, is mechanically it's, um, I have to flip that, yeah, is that mechanically it's uh, just really, really simple. and um, That appeals to me. Yeah, and it maximizes the fun. Um, right. So, so yeah, it's a, it's a it's a cool experience. Normally, I do like stuff that's like kind of heavy and you have to strategize. Um, but sometimes it's fun to just kind of react to what's in your hand mm-hmm. and kind of see. There's a little bit of dice aspect to it, so that definitely um, has an impact. Um, so yeah, those are probably the ones I've been playing most recently. And and I mean, I'd love to get a bunch of games at the table. We played a little bit of Lords of Waterdeep recently and I uh really into that game. I've only played a few times now. I'd love to, That's a fantastic to get that game. out some more, yeah. Mm-hmm. But there's I mean the thing is the so the biggest board gaming convention of the year is on I think uh this weekend. Oh um, really? It's called uh, Gen Con. And I was just watching uh some videos about some of the games coming out at it. And uh yeah it's pretty much yeah exactly like that. You have to do it. Um, it's <laughs> it is crazy how many games come out every year. Like I, I think last year something like a thousand games came out. So there's just not nearly enough time or money to yep. really keep up with like the new hotness is kind of the term everybody uses. I think to give to give board games a point, um, you know, even really like like what's the most expensive board game you know of? About one hundred and eighty bucks. Really? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's for like. I guess Magic the Gathering would be expensive over time as well. Well, that's the thing that can happen if you get, like, collectible stuff, is you just sink a bunch of, mon- bunch of money into it. I was thinking of there's, like, massive, huge-scale board games that'll be, like, 180 bucks one drop. But, yeah, the collectible stuff, like, yeah, you can... <laughs> um, and some of them are really good at figuring out how to kind of squeeze mm-hmm. the most money out of you as possible. Like, Fantasy Flight's a game producer who make great games, and they've got licenses like Star Wars and Lord of the Rings and Game of Thrones, and and they do really good stuff with it. Like they don't waste it, which is great. But for example, they re- they released a, two or three years ago a game called Star Wars X Wing, and it's all dogfighting. And on the surface of it, I'm like, yeah, it's okay. But they did such a good job of it that I'm that I'm really into it. But they sell it, and in order to play it well, you really need to buy like this extra set of dice to sell separately. Stuff like that. Mm, ah, yes. And then, of course, they also have like other sets of X-Wings you can buy, TIE Fighters, and they just keep build, building the set, the collection, right? So my brother-in-law, for example, has... I'm sure he's put in 150 bucks into that easily. You know, and he has to restrain himself to keep it at that level. So, <laughs> and they've released like other Star Wars games since then. They're the same kind of thing. They just kind of keep on... They keep on just pouring in. a little bit more of the tap. Like, oh, you're enjoying what you have? Here's a bit more crack for you. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, cardboard crack. Don't do drugs, kids. Yeah. Especially board game ones. So, that's always the downside to any hobby, right? It's just so easy to spend totally. and spend. And you have to kind of pick and choose what you want to chase. Because I, I enjoy so many different kinds of games that it's easy to fall down the rabbit hole. 
Hmm. What do I do with this piece? Uh, you can put it at the end of a road. Let's just put you on the spot, actually. Which one? This one? I think, I think so. This one? Oh, that one too, yeah. That makes this castle awkward, but that doesn't mean it's impossible. Do I want that castle to not be awkward? I don't know. I'll put well, it here. It's my there castle, it so if you make it awkward. So what this means is you give me... Uh, the, a lot of points. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. No, oh, no, nine points. Ha! Ah. <laughs> Nate's in the lead with 13. Um, Hi, Periscope. Sorry, sorry, we can't really see. Let me ask you the flip question. Uh, on the stream, somebody's oh, chatting. Sorry. Hey, Chris, howdy. Christina, no? I saw, only sorry, I said, oh well. Did you see I played last night? Thanks for all the hearts. Somebody. Thanks for the hearts. Okay, so I'm going to ask you the, appreciate the flip question of... Um, what are your what video games you're playing right now? This mm. is worth four points. There's two tiles. Um, I am still playing. Uh, this is going to be a really funny, ironic one. I'm still playing Words with Friends. Oh, really? <laughs> so speaking of board games well, and say, video games, yeah. I'm pretty much playing Scrabble. Yeah. My turn, right? That's like literally. Yep. Just Scrabble. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put. Um, put it I'm going to say I'm playing that. Um, still playing Adventure Capitalist. Uh, because I just picked it up on Steam, so I just wanted to try it on a computer. So gotta so give you props more to, time to play app games the Hyper, Hyper Hippo than games. Like console. Um, I'm a big fan of like kind of more casual games. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think right now that one uh, Splatoon is amazing. Big, really big, big, big fan of Splatoon. A little bit I've seen of Splatoon it hasn't really drawn my interest. Really? Oh, so well, you gotta play so it. It's just it's fun. Um, well, it's basically like capture the flag, or like, but it's capture the flag with paintball. So you can just like shoot up the space. Four player, four players on online against these four players, mm -hmm. who who can carry, who can conquer the most um, area, like square footage with right. the, with their color. Right. So it's really simple to understand. Super simple, yeah. Yeah, which is really really nice. I yeah. mean, that's actually what um, Wild Warfare should have been. They were kind of doing the same thing of like creating a shooter game for like. You know everybody yeah. rather than a shooter game for just your mature audience right mm -hmm. so that one's pretty rad i'm liking that one a lot and i'm trying to think what else what else am i playing right now most of the mobile games i get are usually game dev story I'm still playing that yeah game dev story is great <laughs> but they're either like uh versions of old games i used to play or they are that they're board games like Ticket to Ride the app um, <laughs> is a, obviously based on a board game yep um, uh, I was going to say I just got board games yeah I just got Boss Monster 2 so that's as an app no like oh. as the expansion pack right which I think is interesting to bring up because it's totally plays on people who have an interest in in video, video games. games yep so, like me I think I mean I think amongst players obviously there's a huge crossover um, amongst those those markets, mm -hmm. you know, obviously the video game industry is massive, uh, makes more money than the movie industry, but or the board game industry. Oh, definitely. So, <laughs> but um, Which is why we got to root for the underdog? Look, board games, board underdog, tact tiles. Oh, sorry, I just picked two tact tiles. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. What else? I'm trying to think what other games I got going on right now. Not too many. I've been busy, so... To, to go back to your question, I... Or just before we played a podcast, I played a game called Sushi Go with my daughter. Yeah. And, yeah. uh... And it's... It does a lot of the things I really want. Like, I'm obviously right now looking for games that... Um, will Quick appeal... Yeah, because my daughter is six, and... Uh, I want to cultivate her into a gamer, um, so that I have another person to game with. A board gamer. Totally selfish. Yeah. So, yeah. but this game is great because it's um, it's really simple, but still really engaging, and you, it's a fun concept where you're building your your dinner, and it's all different kinds of sushi. Yeah. And depending on what kind of sushi you go with, you get different kind of different points. Every hand, uh, I I have my hand, kind of like Seven Wonders. If you remember playing that, 
take, mm-hmm. take a card out, I play it to build my, my meal, and then I give her my hand and she gives me hers. Right. So you're constantly switching hands back and forth. So you're, kind of, you're trying to plan ahead a little bit, hoping to get the card you want the next time you see that hand. Right. So there's a little bit of strategy to it. Um, but it's simple enough that she, she can play it and play it well, and I barely beat her tonight, which, she was, which she's never happy about. But um, you know, it's great. It's like it's the kind of game where I can still have fun, and um, and she gets into it. Yeah, and it's not too hard, right? I mean, I've, I've put in enough time playing um, Snakes and Ladders and oh, Candyland and that kind of stuff. See, those are, I think those are the kind of games that give games, like board games and physical games, a bad name. Mm-hmm. Like, Snakes and Ladders is one of the worst games ever. Well, I'm so not a fan of that. People in the hobby game industry look down their nose at roll and move games, they call them. Yep. Uh, and Monopoly's king, right? I mean, Monopoly's sold so many units that it's... Like, no one's ever going to surpass Monopoly for sales. Mm-hmm. Um, but, I mean, most people in the hobby gaming industry have nothing good to say about Monopoly. And... Uh, <laughs> America's most classic and stressful game. Oh, Snakes and Ladders. Oh, yeah, Snakes um, and Ladders. Awful. Yeah. Did, could I do this move, by the way? Did I mess this up earlier? No. Nope, I can do that? Yeah, because there's other pieces, like corner pieces. It's just like a funny-looking like farm, then? Or funny-looking town? Okay. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. What did you just drop? I put that guy down. So should I put anybody there? Uh, well, or you already have this castle. You could take the farmland here if you want. Farmland. There you go. The only downside to farmers is you don't get them back to the end of the game, but you're doing fine for how many guys you have. Okay. This thing's totally surrounded, so I get this guy back in 10 points. 10 points? Yeah. Ah! <laughs> um, I have a feeling I'm not going to win. I always feel kind of bad about beating people when they play a game for the first time, but I'm not... That's okay. I'm not intentionally trying to... I usually lose games and then trash talk. Did you just put That's this one down? That's my strategy. Yeah, yeah, I put that one down. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so you got to take the farm. Or the other thing you can do is you put take that guy, you get four points right away. Cause yeah, I'll do that. Four points. And then you get your guy and back get as my well. guy back. Yeah, guy back. Um, but I don't get my farm. Okay. No, you can always do that later. That's the oh, rest so thing. you're trying to continue your land, are you? Yeah. Make Sneaky and the cheeky. giantest of castles. Sneaky and cheeky. And the castle pieces, if they have a little shield, they get an extra two points on those tiles. Oh, look at all those shields. How come I don't have more shields? You got one. Lame. <laughs> okay, wait. As I was thinking. Do you think that uh, you feel differently about this debate than you did five years ago? I think so. I think because enough good new games have come out. I think the rise of Kickstarter... Mm. Um, has seen a whole new wave of, um, you know, game designers. So you have all these people who wanted to get into game design, but didn't know how to go about making a video game. So it was kind of like me when I was a teenager, right? Like when, when I made stacks, when I was like, whatever, 14, so you, 15, or however old I was. You're talking about the, the impact in board games or video games or both? I think board games more than video yeah, games. I, I think it's easier for people to create a card game or a board game mm-hmm. than it is like you can create one when you're a teenager mm-hmm. I mean, well you can create a video game too but it's just more work you, there's it's even, a little bit more complicated there's sites out there like uh the game crafter and several other ones too where you can make a professional looking game with really just have making sure you have good rules and uh the artwork and then they'll, they'll do all the production work for you so um yeah i mean it, it was it's never been easier Mm-hmm. Um, to make a to make a really quality board game, Ooh, uh, and kick you're right. Kickstarter has there's some debate about how much it's revolutionized, but um, there's no question that Kickstarter's kind of taken over a certain wing of, or sorry, board games have taken over a certain wing of Kickstarter because of how uh, innovative. I think I closed that. Yeah, absolutely. So two points, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen points. And that, oh, yeah, 14. Okay. Yeah, no, nothing. Sorry. Counting up points. And you're tied. Tied. Woo. And you need your back. I get my guy back. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've, I've heard interviews with guys who are involved with Kickstarter or are, I don't really call them promoters or whatever, have different campaigns on Kickstarter. Mm-hmm. And they talked about how Kickstarter is 
they love the board game guys because they have been the most creative at drumming up support for their campaigns. Oh yeah. So yeah. They'll, they'll find great ways to add incentives and things like that um, to get people. So like people who um, pitch in, you know, a hundred dollars get more. People pitch in one hundred fifty bucks get like this bonus Kickstarter exclusive token or something like that or like there's a lot of that kind of stuff in board game kickstarter so mm-hmm. uh, i think part as a result like there's this huge support for all these indie kickstarter games um there is there is a certain amount of backlash at the same time because um there have been a lot of failures at the kickstarter people will pitch in 50 bucks 100 bucks whatever it is and then it never and ships just because never, yeah because these guys are like i've got this great design i've got this great artwork and i've made a great you know um kind of demo copy and I like, got pictures of it and I made a video for it and that kind of thing and then they re- they are almost too successful where they have to ship out like you know 500 copies and they just don't uh, have the knowledge or ability or they totally underestimate how much money it would cost right so they've raised the amount of money that they asked, they asked for, for and that they realize they're still like you know five grand short of what they actually need right and they're like I, you know I can't, do, can't this. do this yeah so um yeah, it's, it's, it's tricky. There's quite a business to the Kickstarter thing. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, I think there's a big Kickstarter backlash right now. But it, it definitely, like, the idea got a whole bunch of really great documentaries and board games out there. Mm-hmm. All right, so it's my turn. Um, I think, like, just to vote for video games, one thing that video games do really well is if, you, if you're basically a lonely person, like, if you don't have any friends, like... Solitaire is a really crappy <laughs> uh, solo card game, and it doesn't really do at card this, or board at games this point, justice. Is, is at this point, a solitaire a card game, or is it a digital game? Is it played oh. more with cards, or is it played more on like a desktop computer? <laughs> oh, good question. Is it is it a, is it an app, or is it a game a board game? Mm-hmm. You just threw a monkey wrench into this conversation. What are you doing? Um, yeah, so. That's cool. <laughs> I, feel like I, I totally lost my train of thought. I feel like you're struggling a little with the multitasking. Totally struggling with the multitasking. Um, yeah, I don't know. There's just... it's If you're by yourself, then there's like... Video games are the thing to do. Mm-hmm. Because you can play them online. You can play with like... 100 people and feel like there's a riot going on mm-hmm. whereas like board games if you're just by yourself you're just by yourself is so. that is that a good thing though like does does uh, i think being by yourself is good i think it's good for people to have no stimuli for a while it's good for your brain right it's good to be bored well and the other point i was going to make is does you know playing video games and just being plugged into uh like an online world like so you're doing call of duty online or something like that all the time and that's your sort of your connection to the outside world um is that preventing you from getting out there and meeting mm-hmm. people and that kind of a thing um yeah I mean, totally is. for you know a certain kind of an introvert that's not an easy thing obviously to go out and meet people but um you gotta board, do it yeah board game is probably might not necessarily be the catalyst but maybe maybe you have you know say a couple of friends and one of them pulls you out to a board game night and you meet some more people and um, yeah. There's no, there's no like cultural downside necessarily. I think other than uh, the money you can drop into the black pit of hobby gaming, but um, yeah, but there's also a black pit of video gaming. That's true, right? So you got like subscription services and like World of Warcraft subscription rates and, and items and the video games cost a lot. Absolutely. Like Mario Kart Eight, that was like a seventy dollar game. It's not cheap. Just up front or with like the... Just uh, up front. Yeah. And then the, like the DLC is yeah. more. But... Huh. So that's a lot of money. You could buy two really solid, very replayable board games for that price. Yeah. And I would I would look at... I mean, I think some people who get really into the hobby will drop 50 bucks on a game and play it once sometimes. They're just so keen on just picking up new just games and getting... trying them. Yep. But I'm a little more uh, careful about it. Like I, I want to... Uh, that's good. I don't want to buy something unless I'm pretty confident I'm going to get a few plays out of it because, mm-hmm. you know, if you if you buy a game for fifty bucks and play it twice, that was you basically spent twenty five bucks per play, right? So you want to make sure you're getting something that'll be be used. 
that's another reason why I'm always thinking about like who am I going to play this with. There's a lot of games I'd love to play, um, but I don't pick up because I just know I don't have anyone who would be into it. Mm-hmm. Um, so you're you're right because of the social aspect. You're a little bit pigeonholed as a result sometimes because if you don't have the right player, then what's the point of having it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, I guess that I would say would say that is a downside. It could be a source of frustration. Are you um, going to do anything with that? Oh, I don't know if I should I. Yeah. That's never a bad idea. Good idea. You guys aren't making any point sitting in front of you, so you might as well oh, yeah. drop them down. Uh, let's see, let's go like this. I guess I would have been castle a little closer. It's also nice to play things that are a bit slow. Yeah. I think, like, for me, the big games that I'm most into are slow games. Like, that's why I like Fez and Braid. I know they're both indie games that were both featured in Indie Game the Movie, um, but they're both um, kind of slow and methodical like Three Kingdoms is slow and methodical I've always preferred turn-based games to real time mm-hmm. um, same thing I like to kind of just take my time and think about it a bit yep. I feel like real time stuff often is just sort of who can point and click the fastest yeah twitch um, twitch yeah. mechanics exactly which I've never really been that into the game that I probably do play more than any other right now as far as video games go is just Football Manager 2015, which is a, like a soccer simulator, um, which again is like a simulator is in a lot of ways like a lot like a board game. Like you just have a bunch of options in front of you, and you kind of weigh all the factors and you make a choice. Mm-hmm. And like a lot of the board games I really like, um, like this game for example, I'll pick up a tile and there's not really a wrong choice. Like whatever I do can be a positive outcome. So I can either build up my castle or try to add more to a road or whatever it might be. They're all positive things, but it's, but your choice still matters a lot. So I like, I like games of any sort that are like, you know, if I play football manager, whether I choose to um, recruit a player, or, I don't know, mm-hmm. whatever I do, like there's just a lot of different ways to go and it's mm-hmm. not necessarily a bad use of my time, but maybe there was a better use of my time. Yeah. Um, what am I going to do with this one? Let's take it over here. Oh. And He's so fancy. Sick of farmer down there. Yeah, there's something you said in there about impact. Um, having an impact on the experience. And I think that's why, um, you know, I, Minecraft is great. And I enjoy, like, just fiddling around with Minecraft because I like the idea that it's just what you do impacts the world. Mm-hmm. That's really nice. And so this has got that same sort of idea where you're, it's sandbox, you're creating a world. So right now we're like creating a world. It was like that game that we played, like the Haunting at Haunted Hill or whatever the heck it's called. House on Haunted Hill? House on, I don't know if it's that one or something else. Anyways. Or, yeah. You know, the Haunting at, it's also done by Wizards of the Coast. Yeah, you build like your little, the house. Yeah, and, and then like an event levels. happens. And yeah. you turn from a, basically discovering the house into like running Seriously. away from whatever the danger is. Yeah. Which is, which is a really clever mechanic, I think. It is. It was quite a good game. I quite enjoyed it. I found that the games that I've played have been so... I feel like both experiences I've had with it have been outlier experiences, like really atypical. Yep. Um, so I, I do want to play it again to give it a proper chance, because I keep on kind of... Like one time we just beat it extremely easy, and the other time we played it... Um, Joe, my wife, um, killed us all extremely easy. Oh dear. So there, was, there never was like kind of like much time for tension. I don't know where to go here? I guess I could go there. That works. Okay. You could even if so you want to I put a guy somewhere. We take a thief here. You get three points and you get your guy back. Right here. Yeah. Well, like basically this road here, right? Yeah. So if I well, I just go on the road. Yeah. You get okay. Three points. Get your guy back. Sorry, board game break again. <laughs> Carcass on break. Um. Huh? Oh, I don't. Know. So, let's see here. Oh, yeah, there yeah. we go. Time to close the big castle. Oh, man, how many points is Two, that? Four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-four, twenty-six, twenty-eight. So this is the part where uh, he does math and I wait. That's the part of board games that's not as fun. <laughs> counting, was, counting, counting. But it's good for your developmental cycles. It was 36 points. 
them to here. Awesome. Losing. <laughs> okay. I think we're uh, ready to wrap this up. I think we're about ready to wrap this up. Yeah. Well, anyways, I, th I think, to be honest, there's something to be said for... Uh... Oop, I'm going to go there. Okay, let me ask this question. If you... Sure. Uh, money was no no issue, if time was no issue, because um, obviously we have a lot of outside mm -hmm. pressures in our lives as adults. Um, in any given week, do you spend more time pursuing video games or board games? And I'm, because board games are limited to by the social aspect, I'm going to include, I don't know, reading about them, researching about them, whatever. Hmm. I think I'd still pick video games. Uh, because I like there's something about like a Final Fantasy type game or a Dragon Quest. It's like this long experience. It's got music and story. So I think I'd probably still pick video games, and it would make me really sad because I would still want to play board games. So then, if I was forced to like be on a desert island with all the money in the world and can only pick one of the two, I'd I mean, be like, I'm just asking which one you spend more on. It, oh, okay. it doesn't have to be a mutually exclusive thing. If you brought a, brought a video game to a desert island, I think you'd be pretty bored. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Um, yeah. but is there a modern equivalent of those experiences? Because I do love playing that sort of all-encompassing role-playing game. But honestly, yeah. since like... Oh, there's still the same, same deal. Still lots of those role-playing games. Yeah. I yeah. Don't th they're I think... just much, much, much more immersive now. Sure. Well, and that's in a way part of, life. part of the problem. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that's that's the thing with casual games, right? And that's why you have casual games versus hardcore games yeah. in the video game world. Yeah. And uh, I think you and I both are more on the side of casual games than we are of, like, hardcore, like, Call of Duty. Like, that's actually why I don't play, like, Fallout 3, whereas I would play the other ones because they're slower. I think in this scenario we're talking about, I probably would devote some energy to hardcore games, both in the board game world and in... Video yeah. gaming, like, yeah, I don't, like, like bust out some COD. Well, I don't know if that one particularly, but I would not blink at all about playing a game for like, I don't know, three days straight, kind of a thing. Yeah, but 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 like, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. And like a, like a really heavy role playing game that sounds amazing. Oh man, I, I'm gonna bust it out when they seriously PlayStation Four, the remake of Final Fantasy Seven, like mm -hmm. remade in HD. I am all over that. Mm -hmm. I would buy a PS4 just for that. Mm -hmm. That, yeah. So I would end up spending more money on video games. Yeah. Just for, like, remade Final Fantasy VII. Fair enough. If I had... Okay, here's the next question, then. I th you kind of answered it, but... If you had $200 to spend just to play with, mm. where would that money go? Adventure Capitalist. <laughs> <laughs> for me it'd be all board games yeah probably board games depending on the depending on the board game yeah i'm trying to make some like i'm, I'm in that scenario a card game though like i'd, I'd be more card i'd probably dominion yeah something like that and there's a ton of card games out there um but yeah no, i know i probably would go for a variety i just i just uh Love the, the kind of different kinds of options that are that would exist for my two hundred dollars. Like I could get, I could get six like amazing games for two hundred bucks. It depends. Like if if I went like if I was doing two raw two hundred dollars, I would definitely go video games because I would just hit up every humble bundle ever. Right. And spend. I would buy ten bundles, at, or like say maybe actually we'll say like. Mm, yeah, 10, 10 bundles, 20 bucks per bundle, and get like 10 games per bundle on average. So that's the, pretty good. That's like 100 games. The deals must be better on video games for uh, humble bundles than they are board games. Is there some great oh, yeah. bundles they have for board games? But the problem is that when, you, when I factor in the shipping and the exchange rate, especially the way the Canadian dollar is now, oh, yeah. it actually ends up being like the same price as normally would, which is a shame. Um, because like they'll sell like pack like amazing packages, and if I was in the states, I'd be like, it's like half off. Like, yeah, like I mentioned that Star Wars X Wing game. They had one where they were selling like a huge bunch of stuff, and w I think it was like sixty bucks for all of it. And 
yeah, it's like half of the price you normally would pay for. But exchange rate, shipping, no deal anymore. So <laughs> why push it now? So Oh, dear. Yeah. Why bother? Oh, no, that actually wasn't the Humble Hub bundle. That was Mass Drop. Is that what it's called? Okay. Have you heard of Mass Drop? It's like a similar sort of idea, yeah. Yeah, they'll get these packages of, could be lots of different kinds of things. But basically, they'll start with kind of a starting price. Here's what we're offering you, and it is a deal. But the more people who buy into it, um, it'll lower the price. Um, up to a, like a critical amount where they just don't have any more to sell. But yeah. Um, yeah. So great. Yeah. My turn. It is. So, um, so yeah. are, you, are you making your final verdict? Yeah, I think, I mean, between the two, I would probably lean video games. But that's, it's got to be a tie for me. I don't know. I just, I can't really justifiably say video games over that point. Six, eight. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's, it's kind of like where I am in my life. I'm saying board games. Yep. I think 10 years ago, I definitely would have said video games. Yep. Five years ago, probably been a harder choice. But um, I think like, the older I get, the harder it is to find time to socialize with people. And this forces it. You know, <laughs> cause, because I make time to do this. Yep. Whereas if I made time to play video games, I don't think I'd feel nearly as satisfied with the time spent. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. All right, well, we'll call it a call it a show. Mm-hmm. Um, so thanks everybody for listening, and uh, we do plan to do a, you know more podcasty type things, maybe potentially in the future. I was thinking we could actually probably do like a. A, a redeeming U2 stream. I was thinking the same thing. So what do you think? Joshua Tree versus Octung Baby? You want to do a real topic and do something hardcore? Wow, that's tough. I want a serious debate and try and give give Joshua Tree the fair swing at the s- stick. Or whatever they would say. <laughs> I'm not sure. But a swing at a stick just sounds well, like... We're going to give... Yeah, it sounds, sounds stupid. <laughs> sounds totally stupid. That's so, not like a real thing. Yeah, we'll have to, we'll have to give U2... An actual, proper, legit second shot. Because as uh, as fairly large U2 fans, felt we a little bit disappointed. We didn't we were, do it justice. We didn't bring in our bring our A game that time. And so when we, when we do U2, we will do it without playing a board game while talking about it. So or, that, that should help. Or a video game. Or playing video games. So um, yeah, thanks everybody who listened to the podcast, and uh, really appreciate you guys subscribing. And we'll catch you again. Another time. <laughs> yeah. Till the next time. Bye. Au revoir.